You're listening to the Broadway Podcast Network. Intentional creation is a word that I want to have tattooed on my butt cheeks. <laughs> 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 hey, Heather Vickery. <laughs> we met by okay. chance and embraced opportunity. We did. That's actually true. Yeah. Well, how did we, we meet? Tell the story. We, we fell at like in friend love. Right. Didn't we? I think we did. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Is this your... So this is what I'm supposed to say. I love you back. Okay. I love you back. Hey, listen. It's in, it's in your actions, not your words for me. <laughs> That's deep. That's deep, man. That's how I roll. Who are we? We met at a podcasting conference. I actually really remember. So you, <laughs> you were like the king of the loners that night. And you're not like that. You're like social and chipper and happy and all those fun things. But you were like, I'm going to go to the movies by myself. And I'm like, I don't even know you, but you should go to dinner with us. <laughs> and then we fell in friend love. And then well, it was okay. So it was podcast movement in Nashville. Yes. So g give them a plug. We were there because we're both podcasters. We've got podcast lives outside of this podcast. And all of the people that I was there to meet had not shown up because of COVID. And we are the stupid ones who did show up. <laughs> we weren't stupid, though. We met each other. Hey, well, was yes. that chance? I think that was chance. Or we should start a, a podcast about that. <laughs> we should start a podcast about that. All right. Well, so maybe you thought... You were there to meet all of these other people, but you were there actually to meet me. I think so. And in another life, I think we would have this giant family with 20 million <laughs> children. <laughs> if I weren't gay and all. If you weren't gay and all, and I wasn't already married with two kids of my own. Yeah. Then yes, I think, and live in different places and all sorts of things. <laughs> yes, then we, we might be, yeah, I think we're, we are besties. We are podcast and real life besties. And people talk about manifestation as a thing that you can just think into existence and serious for a second. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. It's really not that easy. The thing is, when it comes to making your creative mm -hmm. dreams come true, what really matters is actually putting yourself in a position to thoughtfully and intelligently we were really careful about that word. Intelligently take advantage. <laughs> I was say, that's hard for us. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Alan Seals. To take advantage of the opportunities presented to you because just like at Podcast Movement, sometimes these opportunities show up in really unexpected ways. And if we're not paying attention, we miss them. So I guess to go back to the actual story about how we met, which we never really told. Oh, we never really told that story. I was okay. sitting, standing at a table that was socially distanced from other tables in this particular room. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, all the people that I know are not here. All the people that I don't know are somewhere else. And so I was, I, I was I'm a people, by the way, I'm a whole person, folks. I was sitting <laughs> right there. Not yet. I had just purchased my movie ticket on my phone. At the movie theater, there was about a 10 minute walk away. And then you and some friends that I think you had just met there like a few minutes previous, right? Came up and were like, hey, can we share your standing table with you? Yes. One of them was my friend, Mary Rupp from the Latter-day Lesbian podcast. She was my yes. roommate. So shout out so, to Mary and Latter-day Lesbian. So yeah, you and Mary yes. walked up and were like, hey, I'm paraphrasing here. I think we just all became best friends. I think so. I mean, literally in about, what, five, ten minutes, it was like, we're just going to be best friends. We're going to go out to dinner. And it was on the way we were walking. First of all, can we just – the food options were not ideal. I missed the Bojangles pop-up truck, and I you blame you for that. It was but my it was fault. Worth it. It, I, it was actually my fault that you missed the Bojangles pop-up truck, and I f actually feel bad about it. It's okay. This is way better than Bojangles, um, and it takes a – big part of me to admit that <laughs> thank you i feel really special <laughs> <laughs> so so we went to we're walking to dinner and on the way i learn i know nothing about you I, your name tag says bpn i don't know what that means at this time and but i discovered that you live in new york city brooklyn like, oh i'm gonna be there 
for Thanksgiving, it was my partner's family every other year. I go to New York and I spend Thanksgiving with her family and I stay the weekend to like do fun stuff and hang out with people I know. And I said, are you going to, can you hang out with me? And you're like, yep, done. And that was it. It was like, <laughs> it was like meant to be BFFs. We had all these plans and I was, and I think I looked across the dinner table at you and I said, we're new best friends now, aren't we? The waitress ended up hating us, even though she had to like us. I don't think that's true. I think the waitress liked us. You think so? I think the chef might not have liked us, but I think the waitress liked us. Well, you did run back and throw your food at the chef's face. I did not do that. He yeah, lies. Yeah. No, Alan doesn't no, I remember you, you got up and you were <laughs> you like, so shit. where is the chef? I need to pay my compliments. I put I in air know. quotes and you ran know. in the kitchen and threw the food okay. in the chef's face. So if you're going to be a regular listener to the Was It Chance podcast, you need to know right away that Alan lies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I exaggerate. <laughs> I did not. I exaggerate. I don't particularly, I don't lie. You did have f issues with the food. Yeah, the food was not good, but the service no, no, the food was, was good. good. Nashville, I don't <laughs> think is known for its food. It's known for its music, but you can't eat music. Some people can. Not and nourish themselves. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Okay, so then I learned what BPN was and you're a Broadway guy and I'm a Broadway girl. I have a musical theater degree. I've just never actually lived in New York or, you know, performed in New York. <laughs> However, I'm a big theater nerd. And my kids now tell me it's officially unacceptable for me to still be a Hamilton fan because it's been too long. You haven't seen it. Oh, I've seen it five times. Well, then how can you not be a Hamilton? Why, this, why did you lose your Hamilton fan license? I, because my children said it's over and it's done and I need to let it go. It's no longer acceptable for me to think in Hamilton lyrics, which is where we really solidified our best friendship. Heather, do not throw away your shot. <laughs> so I said to you, like, do you ever stop thinking in Hamilton lyrics? And you were like, no, who does that? So we had exchanged phone numbers and we're chatting and we're having a great time. Do you remember this? And yeah. And out of the blue, out of nowhere, kind of late at night. Because <laughs> we were texting. I was taking the Uber back to where I was staying and we were... Yes texting each other like lovers who had just left each oh other. God. My, for the, my partner for is evening. not going to like listening. To this. <laughs> it was not like lovers. It was like friends. Who, who love each other. In a okay, friendly way. Alan, okay. But I texted you. Do you remember what I said? I said, can, you said, can, can we, we get real a second? Can we for get just real a millisecond. A no, like, no, oh. no. I just said, can we get real a second? And then I oh, dropped oh, oh. it. And you were so serious. You were like, yeah, absolutely. Actually, this was, this is, we were not texting yet. We were going back and forth on Instagram. the event app. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was Uba. the event Uba. app. <laughs> so your response was, yeah, absolutely. I'm here for whatever you need. It might be easier if you actually text me. Here's my phone number. So then I text your phone and I'm like, you've totally let me down. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, I dropped that ball. You I dropped drop that ball. ball. And, and then I knew, never again can I take you seriously. Oh, right. Because I'm the liar in this situation. No. The you can take me seriously. But it was funny. And then you came back. You were like, oh, oh, wait, I missed it. I missed it for just a millisecond. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a new book that just came out. I do. It features your favorite word. What is that word? And what is the book? The word is Fuck. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And the book is called Fuck Fearless. And yes, it's intentional. And yes, it's bold. And there have been haters. And that's okay, because they're not my people. Have there been haters? Oh, yeah. Like, I would never read that book because of that foul word in the title. Like, it's okay, man. I'm not for everyone. Good. So your book spoke to me uh, very much in, in that basically, it's just like, fuck, fuck being fearless. Like, just put your money where your mouth is, essentially, yeah. and do it. And, yeah. and that's, in all seriousness, I think, uh, where this podcast has come from, because we now are going to be bringing you interviews, you the listener, uh, with people who have taken a chance and, and had it shape their lives, change their lives and others in their in their creative way in their business, their professional lives, in ways that they never would have predicted. 
and we're going to bring you those stories. Yeah. And we're really excited about it because I think we had this like sort of magical moment where we thought, was it, was it chance that we ended up here and then we got to meet each other randomly? You were going to go to the movies. You didn't go to the movies. Like now we're going to do this cool thing together. And how often do we stop to think about the choices and the actions we make that put us in a position to have something really great happen? And we either miss the sign or we don't pay attention or we don't take the action. And so how much of it is chance and how much it is intentional creation? Intentional creation is a word that I want to have tattooed on my butt cheeks. <laughs> um, it's two because, words, unless you hyphenate it. But don't worry, you have to say it real fast. <laughs> um, a phrase is what I meant to say. Oh, See, okay. I exaggerate. So, um, but it's the, it's, if for me, it's been, uh, I kind of equate it to, to improv, the yes and of life. Absolutely. In that if I stop to think about all the things that could go wrong with any, with the multiple outcomes of any decision I am faced with, then I just sit on my couch and binge watch Netflix all day. hundred percent. Like we can't sit around and be like all the things that could be bad if I make this choice or take this action. I mean, we can, and sometimes we do. But then as because I'm, I'm a success and leadership coach and what I would tell a client is, OK, well, now we know what the worst thing is that could happen. What's the best thing? Like if you mm -hmm. go out and do this. So let's look at this podcast as an example, because people think I have lost my damn mind that I am adding something else to my list of things I do. And I'm mm -hmm. sure your wife was like, you're going to do what with who? But whatever. <laughs> the, what is the worst thing that could happen? The worst thing that could happen is. I hang out with my friend and we have a good time and we talk to some cool people and we do it for a while and then we don't. That's literally mm -hmm. the worst thing that could happen. Mm -hmm. The best thing that could happen is like, who the hell knows? We have a live TV show and we make billions of dollars and I'm the next gay white Oprah. And I don't know, who are you? Who are you in this scenario? I, 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 listen, you don't need another cis straight we don't. male. So you could be my sidekick then. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, I will be your sidekick until the cows come home. Oh, Alan, thank you. You're hey, welcome. I have a question for you. What's that? What is the first time, uh, let's tell me just say as an adult, no, we were telling terrible dad jokes earlier. No, what is the first time as an adult that you can remember that something happened that maybe felt like chance and you took action on it and you were like, no, I'm going to do something with this. This was not an accident. It was when I moved to New York to be an actor and started doing computers, started doing IT. It worked out well for you. Mr. That worked Google. out very well for me. Had it ended up at Google as an engineer, which brought me into the Broadway world, which was another chance I embraced. And so now have not only the talks at Google job, but a Broadway podcast network called the Broadway Podcast Network <laughs> dot com. And strangely enough, someone just said, hey, do you want to produce Broadway? And now I have two Broadway production credits. That's really cool. And there are a lot of those moments in our lives where if we're not paying attention, they kind of just fly on by and we really miss out on some cool opportunities. Let me ask you a question. Do you feel like introverts are at a at an immediate disadvantage to taking advantage of the chance of sitting down next to a stranger and talking to them? That's a great question because I am an introvert. No. I am. I seriously don't believe that. I know you don't believe that. Nobody believes that. And I didn't know it either until COVID, in which... I realized I never needed to be around other people and that would be perfectly fine. So the main difference between an intro, I mean, I'm an extroverted introvert, but the main difference is where do you get your energy, right? And so something like podcast movement worked for me because I came two days early and I stayed two days late and I was by myself both of those times. Like I needed to be completely by myself to recalibrate before I could go home and be with all four of my kids and my partner. And my partner calls them my five needy bitches. <laughs> my kids and my partner, <laughs> my five needy bitches. 
That's the next Disney movie, actually, by the way. I saw the preview for it. Are you going to produce it? <laughs> yes. I'm looking for investors. I, I, I've already yeah. spent all my money. Yes. Um, the White Chicken or Five Needy Bitches coming to a theater <laughs> near you. Could I at least be the queer white chick? Wait, the can, queer can I give white chick some and her five needy bitches. <laughs> It's a little bit harder for, I mean, super hardcore introverts, I think could be a little bit more challenged in that way to answer that question. But I think it's more about, it's, it's less about being in big, huge spaces or going to conferences and, you know, putting yourself out there and more about just sort of looking for those opportunities. I think a great example, I was at the She Podcast Conference last month. I was a Mm -hmm. speaker there, but the keynote speaker was Cameron Esposito, who I really want to have on this show by the way. Just going to put that out there. Let's put it out there. Let's, and, let's Oprah this into existence. Yes, please. And, and Cameron is like painfully shy, super, super introverted. And it's, it's obvious. It's part of what makes them a really good comic <laughs> and good stand-up comic, but also they have these great podcasts and they've found all sorts of amazing opportunities and lean into these chances and, for lack of a better term, manifested them. And and I like the word manifestation. I just, people think that it means you think a thing and then that thing exists. And that's not what it means. It means you declare a thing and then you change your action and your behavior so that the thing can exist at some point. You're subconsciously helping yourself choose a more desirable path in the multiverse. Absolutely. So into the multiverse. God, I love you, Alan Seals. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be one of your needy bitches. Now, the other and her I'll be, I'll be less needy. I'm pretty self sustainable. You do okay. I agree that that I feel like when you start to literally say things, not just think it, but like say it. Like I talk to myself all You've the time. You've got to say it out loud. Absolutely. And I, and I hear it in my mind after I've said it. And then when I come to a decision, a crossroads, immediately the first thing that pops in my mind is what I've, I'm hearing in the back of my head of what I've already said. And so without thinking about it, the decision to take that chance doesn't become uh, a, a discussion, a fight in my mind anymore. That's right. It's just a thing we're going to do. Yeah. And it's a risk. But it's again, it's a risk that there's really no harm, no foul if it doesn't come to be. What could, you know, you waste your time, maybe feel stupid. Maybe nobody listens. Eh, I can live with that. It's a chance. That's it's literally. A chance. It's literally a chance. Literally a chance about, I mean, well, podcasting in general is all about but, chance. But you don't literally... get, you don't get a chance if you don't ever fucking go out and do anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's where, that's where I, I get frustrated with people now in my old age of 41 I get frustrated. I'm so much older than you. (laughs) I get frustrated with people who are afraid to talk to someone or afraid to to try something they've never done before simply because they don't want to fail at it. Well, if you don't try, you've already failed. Absolutely. If you if you don't put yourself out there, then you're not going to be any farther beyond where you already are. Hundred percent. And also, failure is such a stupid construct. There's always a lesson. So one of my, see, I love podcasting conferences because I meet my best people there. So one of my newer friends, Stevie, so I'll give a shout out to Stevie, who I'm excited to introduce you to, by the way. Uh, Stevie at the dinner table with a bunch of folks from She Podcast said, let's do Peach and Pit. And people are like, what's that? Well, we do gratitude practice. I'm a firm believer in the power of gratitude, certified in positive psychology. I've written two books on gratitude. It's a big deal for me. But I'd never been in like an adult situation where a grown ass person says, let's do a gratitude practice at the dinner table with all these other grown ass people. And they called it the peach in the pit. So like Rose and Thorn? Well, it is like Rose and Thorn or, you know, my house, we do favorite part of the day and grateful. My children are very resistant to switching to peach and pit. But I loved it and I couldn't quite figure out why. It sat with me for like 24 hours until we were all back together for dinner the next night. And I realized here's why I like it. Because you literally cannot grow a peach without the pit. Oh, okay. So what, if I'm interpreting this correctly, then what was the 
linchpin in your day, if we're talking um, on a micro level, that has created a great opportunity for you at the end of the day? There you go. Like what sucked and then what's in it for you? Yeah. Because there's always like something that. in it for us, right? I like it. Too. I like that. I like that. I think my kids would be too young to understand that concept, but I'm going to try it on them. Yeah. Try we do, it. We do Rose sure. and Thorn. Bedtime is always Rose and Thorn. We do that. My littlest one, who's eight, took right up to Peach and Pit. Loved it. My older ones are too set in their ways. So I would say your boys are a perfect age for it because they're malleable. <laughs> like you can, let's try this. Uh, but, you know, when I'm coaching, I don't ever say wins and losses. So this is why I don't like Rose and Thorn. I mean, I'm all for Thorn. But I say, what are your wins and lessons? Same thing as Peach and Pit, right? Like what's, what were your opportunities here? to do something different or to learn. And I have a good friend. I had her on, on the podcast on the Brave Files. Uh, she does a celebratory failure event with her kids every day. What did mm -hmm. you fail at today? And then they tell her, she's like, oh my gosh, now what did we learn from that? What are we going to do differently? Or how are we going to change that? And I just think it's friggin' awesome. Yep. Yes. I, I have... Now I heard several people who do that. They sell, they literally do a celebration of failure. They talk about yeah. what they failed at that day. And then, uh, yeah, it turns into the peach and pit. What, how did that failure turn into something positive? Exactly. And I would venture to say that that moment of failure could be your chance if you're paying attention. This is all about training yourself to be not hyper aware to a fault. So you're missing what's around you, but to be more trained to notice small, small details yeah. or small opportunities as they, as they not pass you by, but as they present themselves to you. Before they day. pass you by. Because if yes, you're not paying they attention, they will for sure pass you by. Right, yeah. right. That's why one of the simplest things that I taught myself to do years ago was in elevators, don't look at my phone. See who I'm in the elevator with. And mm -hmm. you know what? got me to do that is through my time at Google, I've had many, a, many, many, a bigger name come through in an elevator and, with you. Well, I'm, I'm escorting them from the entrance yeah. to, to our green room or to the event space or wherever the case is. So like one of the, one of the biggest things that I remember, like I got in a packed, packed elevator in the morning. I was taking Bob Saget from the lobby up to the 11th floor, shoulder to shoulder elevator, Every other single person except Bob and me were looking down on their phones. All you had to do was look up and say like, holy shit, That's I am funny. standing. I'm literally shoulder to shoulder <laughs> with Bob Saget right now. Yeah. And it's those types of opportunities. Like I've walked around with Jamie Foxx, with Harrison Ford, with, Re with Reese Witherspoon, literally exact same situations where these uh, Jessica Biel, Anna Kendrick, Everyone just looks down on their freaking phones the whole time. And they don't even see the, the opportunity literally walking by them to say hi to somebody that they may never, ever get to see again, that yeah. they've always wanted to meet. I love that. So that's a great, I think that's a great example of leaning into the opportunity, leaning into the chance. You never mm -hmm. know. Put down your phone and pay attention and be aware. Look around you, see what you feel. It's not just phone. I mean, phone is a very specific example, but uh, when I was younger, I wouldn't have thought that going to a movie, like going, taking it back to the original, going to a movie by yourself, eating dinner by yourself, I would have never thought that that was, that was acceptable. I would have never wanted to do that. Oh. And then now, again, in my old age, <laughs> I'm always so go, go, go. Kids need something. Love my wife. She always needs something. Everyone needs something. Yeah. And sometimes for me as an extrovert, I like to now be by myself. I love to be by myself. I take solo vacations quarterly where I go for five days, pack a bunch of food, pack a bunch of books, go off the grid at an Airbnb. And I just don't talk to other people for five days. It's magic. That's beautiful. I did an episode of, of my show. Actually, I recorded it from Nashville after podcast movement um, or the last day of podcast movement in those, one of those little booths. And I, the whole episode was dedicated to the gifts you can give yourself when you choose to do things alone. I've tra I've traveled alone a lot mm -hmm. and dinners and 
restaurants. And the very first time I did that was not by choice. I got ditched by my like longtime best friend, childhood best friend. And that was so painful. And I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go anyway. Mm -hmm. And I was young, my really early 20s. And I was like, you know what? I am fascinating and I am fun (laughs) and I like hanging out with me. And did you meet people and talk to people and find opportunities because you were by yourself that you wouldn't have had if you were heads down with somebody else the entire time? It's a great question. I was really young and I probably wasn't seeking those opportunities at the time, but I did have experiences like really poignant, life-changing experiences, but I didn't make any like, you know, new friends that were going to change my life, but I learned a lot about myself. I went to, to London and Bangkok. It was a work trip many years ago. It was about 10 plus years ago. And that was the first time I traveled internationally by myself. And it was, it was just a trip where, because I didn't want to go back to my hotel after work, every day and just be myself. Exactly. I just went out and I just walked. And because I was by myself, I embraced the chances that I was having and asked the the street chefs what they were cooking and, yes. and was talking, sat down with people who were also by themselves and tried to, and was making friends with them. And that carried over into another trip with Italy that I went with a platonic friend of mine. And she and I, literally everywhere we went we're just making friends left and right and ended up becoming like besties with this group of belgium cops that were off (laughs) duty on vacation that's awesome and we're hanging out with them in rome for like four days and ended up having the greatest time that that if we had just been afraid to give your give a little bit of yourself outside of your comfort zone would have never experienced absolutely i i will say i've always been the kind of girl who makes a friend on vacation So some of my closest friends still are people that I met when I was 12, 13, 14 years old on a family vacation. And it was a lot harder to keep in touch back then. (laughs) We had to like make expensive phone calls and write real letters. And we still keep in touch. On papyrus? Yeah. You like like stamp, you do your your wax stamp on your papyrus? Yeah. Six years older. That's all. Just six years. (laughs) So, Alan, what can listeners expect from our show? Like, what kind of guests are we going to have on? In the true spirit of this podcast, I'm going to take a chance. And I say we have every single type of person you can imagine. Business people, Uh CEOs, Broadway stars, creatives, TV and film celebrities. Everybody has to have gotten where they are by saying yes to something that they weren't quite comfortable with in the first place. I'm excited to ask those people if they knew, like, did they declare? Did they seek it out? Were they like, I want this, I'm gonna find a way to create this? Or were they just opportunities that they they were presented with and they said, let's take a chance, let's try it. I wanna know what their failures are and how they improve because of their failures. I love that. You guys can, If you have questions, if you want us to ask specific questions about chance, creation, manifestation, opportunities, let us know. We can implement those. What do you think, Alan? Let's do it. You want to take a chance to start a podcast with me? I think we just did. I think we did it. (laughs) Hey, we did it. (laughs) That is awesome. All right. Was it chance? The podcast about embracing opportunity and taking intentional risks for your creative life. Coming to you from me, Heather Vickery. And me, Alan Seals. Found everywhere podcasts are found. Who are we? We're two random strangers. Too perfect. Too perfect. Well, I'll be Balky. I'll be Balky. <laughs> <laughs>